Welcome to the second and final part of this video on making balsa crankbaits. This video deals with finishing the layer body from sealing through foiling the layer, creating the faces, making a lip and fitting it, painting, clear coating and finally taking it for a swim. As with the first video I'll make available a full list of tools and materials. You should be able to find that list in a PDF form by following the link to my blog. Some of the main items I'll be using in this video are for sealing the balsa body and then clear coating later I'm using Envirotex which is a two-part epoxy resin. For the foil sides of the layer and face I'm using self-adhesive aluminium foil. Later to give it a bit of texture I'll be using this aluminium reinforcing mesh. This is normally used for car body repair. For the lip I'm using a 2 mil polycarbonate sheet and also a plastic hammer along with a knife to cut that down. To make a start on finishing the lower body, I'm going to apply a seal coat of epoxy. To do that, I've measured out three quarters of a milliliter of both parts of the Envirotex resin. And using the medicine cup, I'm going to give it a mix for a couple of minutes, just making sure I scrape the sides and bottom. To apply the resin, I'm almost going to overload the brush and really give the wood a heavy coat. But making sure I get into all those nooks and crannies like the bill slot and the front face of the layer. Then I can just set it aside for 10 minutes. The wood's now had a chance to soak up some resin. And I'm going to kind of wipe off what remains. And then I can simply leave it to cure. The resin's had about 18 hours to dry. Most of it's been absorbed into the surface. Um, I've just got some 400 grade sandpaper here. And I'm just flattening any fibres, wood fibres that have stuck up. But it all feels pretty smooth. So I can move on to the next stage, which is adding the foil. To make the foil that covers the sides, I've folded over a piece of 2 inch aluminium tape. Um, and I've taken the template, the foil template, and stuck it to the paper backing. Then it's just a case of cutting round, cutting that out. So that's given me the two sides. I'm now going to apply some texture. I'm going to use my car body mesh, a metal bar, and just with a bit of wood apply some pressure. And roll the texture on. Just to smooth it out a bit, I'm going to go back with the bar and what that should give me is the marks without the wrinkles. Just a case of repeating that for the other side. Before I apply the foil to the layer, I'm just going to mark a couple of tram lines on the back with a pencil. Uh, just very lightly. This is not to work to, more just to kind of tell me how far out I am when I fit in the foil. So I've peeled away the backing for the first side. I'm just going to kind of tack it to one end and then just see if I can find what I think is the is the centre. That doesn't look too bad. And then working from the from the inside out I just begin to push it down. I've got a pencil here, anything round and smooth will do and I'm just going to start pushing the, the edges down. Flattening out any creases. I've turned over them on the other side, and this I always, I always find the hardest to be honest. I'm going to do kind of the same again, so tack down at the end, and then try and find what I think is the middle. The tram lines help a bit, it means I can look down on top and see where I am. That way you can see that. 
which looking at that doesn't actually look too bad. Before I finish with the foiling, I need to just uh, slice this where the lip slot's going to be. Just push that bit of foil back. Do the same on the other side. To create the face for the layer, I've printed out the PDF on some medium weight photo paper. And what I'm going to do is cut out these face templates. I've got a base layer here, and I've got the second gill plate and lip that I'm going to cut out in the shaded area, and then just the lip and these are all going to be laid on top of the first. To make it a bit easier to work I've cut out one side. So once I've cut my three pieces out, I can just assemble them. With a bit of glue. To add the foil, I'm going to lay this on some of the backing tape from the foil and then take the piece of foil and just stick it over and then just softly with some fingers just work it over. To bring a bit of definition to the face I've got a, a child's felt tip pen it's actually still working this, you can see it's putting a bit of colour which will wipe off I'm just going to gently go around the outline. So to cut it out I'm going to come tight against this line all the way around until I get to about here. And then I'm just going to make a little tab and one here. To attach it to the layer, it's a case of sticking it on. I'm going to kind of line it up. And then just push the tabs down. There we go. So I'm going to repeat that for the other side. With the face now fitted on both sides, I can move on to making the lip. To make the lip, I've cut the template out from the PDF and just stuck it with a bit of glue stick to this piece of laxon. Then to cut the shape out, I'm using a craft knife which I'm going to lay on the lines that I want to cut to. And then I'm going to strike it with a plastic hammer for safety's sake. And that's just going to mark line. Once I've scored the blade shape I'm going to put a hinge and then grip with a pair of pliers and just snap. Then it's just a case of repeating that for the other two sides. The small corners here
can just be trimmed off and then sanded round. using the sanding block. To cut away the notches from the side I'm just going to uh, push the knife down there and just kind of rock it backwards and forwards and do the same on the other side. Then using the blade and the hammer again I should just be able to knock out the corner. To cut out the slot in the centre of the lip I'm using my three hacksaw blades that are stuck together and just pressing the lip up against my sanding block just to get me a start. So to fit the lip I've just taken off the protective cover and just push it in the slot, nothing really more than that. Then it's a case of lining it up and that's really what's a bit tricky. I tend to use the long sides to line it up rather than the face details. Once I'm happy I've got the right position then a drop of super glue should hold it in place. When I'm happy the super glue is rigid, I'm going to put some scotch tape on. Just a bit of a way down the bib. This is going to stop any epoxy when I coat running over the bib. And I'll do the underside as well. To fit the eyes, I'm going to glue them with a touch of super glue as a temporary measure and the eye I'm using is my my favourite one at the moment which is just a little red shiny half bead I'll give that a moment to settle and then turn over and do the other side with the eyes and the lip fitted I'm nearly up to the stage of clear coating I just want to fill in though behind these eyes because they're quite large um, to make them kind of pop out with a bit of uh, five minute epoxy so I've mixed up another little batch of five minute epoxy and I'm going to just see if I can get that in tight behind the eye I've given that resin behind the eyes a couple of hours to set and I really need to make preparation now for the first layer of clear coat. To do that I've put my layer on a cloth and I'm using a bit of rubbing alcohol which I'm going to spray behind and then just clean the layer. What this hopefully will do will take off any grease that I've put on the foil from my fingers, uh, clean away any dust as well and bring back a bit of a shine. To begin the process of clear coating I've put the layer on a drying or coating rack and all this is is a disco ball motor this rotates about one and a half revolutions per minute uh, it's just hung on some wires one end goes to a swivel and obviously the other end the motor. So I've mixed up my clear coat epoxy I normally work on about one and a half to two milliliters per layer of this size and then it's just a case of applying it um, I kind of just think about that I'm applying varnish rather than epoxy when I do this otherwise I start to panic but just an even coat um, I'm going to apply some here to the front and the back by the lip but I don't want to apply a lot the rest of it I'm going to kind of flood almost as if I was applying as I say a reasonable coat of varnish So I'm kind of happy with that. It looks like I've covered everything there. There's a few bubbles and I'm going to let them rise and they may naturally just pop themselves. And then I'm going to come back 
maybe about five, ten minutes and just check it over. So it's been about five minutes. I can see a lot of the bubbles have gone. Um, what I'm checking for to see if I've overloaded it and there's any lumps or if there's any areas that I've missed. It all looks pretty good. There's one or two bubbles hiding away there and I'm going to pop them using a blow lamp. A mini blow lamp. I'm swiping this over very fast. I don't necessarily want the heat, the carbon dioxide. So everything looks okay. I'm just going to cover it up and leave it. So my layer's off the rack and it's touch dry and now I need to make the preparations for spraying. You can see already I've covered the bill right the way up to the body with some tape and the eyes I've put a tiny bit of polymer clay on um, just so they stay fresh and don't pick up any paint. Finally I've got a clean piece of 400 grade sandpaper and I'm just going to scratch, not so much sand but scratch the top and the bottom of the layer to give some key to the paint. To paint the layer I'm using a standard dual action airbrush which is linked to a compressor. Paint wise they're all acrylics I've got black and white opaque and these I'm going to use to cover the joints at the top and the bottom of the layer. A blue transparent just to add a bit of uh, flavour to the top of the layer. A red for a bit of bleeding gills and a shimmer coat um, for the top and the bottom just to give it a kind of natural fleck. I've turned the layer upside down and I'm ready to start spraying and the first coat I'm going to apply is white just to cover up these joints here and the brass. I've thinned down the paint so I'm building up the layers very slowly and every now and again I'm going to stop and just give it a blast of heat just to set the paint. So the bottom's complete, the lines have almost completely disappeared. Um, I've got a bit of overspray, just a fine mist of white's gone around the corner. So I've got a, my cloth and a bit of the rubbing alcohol or IPA again, and I'm just going to brighten up the area where the foil is. I've turned my layer over and changed the paint to black. It's the same process as underneath, thin coats, lots of them and the occasional blast with a heat gun. I finished with the black and switched to blue and I'm just going to put a band underneath that black. So I'm back underneath and I've switched to red and now I can do my bleeding gills. I've made the final paint change and this is just the shimmer coat. I'm not going to apply too much of this. So the paintwork's finished and what I'm going to do now is just leave it for a few hours or possibly overnight before I go back to clear coating. Give the paint really a chance to fully cure and breathe. So I'm back with my layer on the rack. I've got a fresh batch of epoxy, clean paintbrush and it's time to give it another clear coat. The procedure is exactly the same as before. Apply an even coat of epoxy, leave it a few moments for the bubbles to pop, then come back to it with a blow lamp. And once you're happy, everything's sorted, cover it up and leave it overnight. And then repeat the whole process again.
I've taken the scotch tape off the bills, added some number 6 treble hooks and split rings and I'm just off down the lake to give them a test. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to share, like or even subscribe to my channel for more videos.